What's up? What's up? J Rock in the building. Event stream team. Shop talk. We got something special going on tonight. We're going to talk about that new Behringer wing. But before I get the show started, check this out. everybody for tuning in tonight so my name is Jay rock representing the power jam DJs and that good event stream team so right now it's the perfect opportunity for you to go ahead and hit that share button if you're on Facebook go ahead and start a watch party and we're gonna get the party started <laughs> so uh, just to give you some background my name is Jay rock um, one half of the Power Jam DJs, one fifth of the event stream team. And so my background is event productions, um, lighting, DMX, all that good stuff, trussing, uh, sound system for events, um, front of house, you name it. <laughs> as well as event video production with live streaming and all that good stuff. And so we, we, have, we, we are a full-service production company um, specializing in all types of events, from conferences to uh, weddings to fashion shows, talent shows. And our goal is to really use technology uh, to make events super dope. <laughs> no other way to put it. And so today... Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about um, the new Behringer, the Behringer wing, which has been highly anticipated. And so, um, <clears throat> that's, that's on the agenda for tonight. Um, I host this um, live podcast uh, that's entitled Shop Talk Live or Shop Talk. And I do this, uh, the normal day is Wednesdays at 9 p.m. But my goal is to do it twice a week, Mondays and Wednesdays. But it just really depends on my workload with gigs and all of that good stuff. And so it, it's, I go between um, um, setting up for events, planning events, and the typical stuff that us event professionals do. And so without further ado, we're going to move on to the topic at hand. And that is this beautiful piece of kit right here. This is the new Behringer Wing. They call it a personal mixing system, which left a few of us scratching our heads. It's like, okay, personal mixing system? And so we was trying to figure out who's this thing targeted towards. Is it for the professionals? Is it for your home studio? You know, we're trying to figure that out. Um, just looking at the price tag, um, $3,500 US, I said this is more geared towards uh, that professional crowd. Um, looking at the hardware itself, I would say it's definitely an upgrade from the X32 design. Not necessarily the Midas M32. And so... Um, 
a lot of people say that this thing looks like a lighting desk or uh, one of those older Tascam recorders. <laughs> Me, myself, <laughs> I think it looks pretty dope. I think they're giving us a lot of the features that we've been asking for, for sure. Definitely a smaller form factor, but this system still comes in at 50 pounds. And so, <laughs> we're going <laughs> to see how that goes. Another thing I'm excited to see uh, with the unique layout this thing has is what type of road cases will become available for this. Because, you know, every time there's a new product that's launched, like this Behringer system, there's a whole ecosystem of accessories that's launched to go with it. That's your road cases, digital snakes, um, covers, deck savers. Um, this is a, a touch screen on it, so I'm sure somebody's going to make a screen protector. And so it's going to be a whole lot of gadgets. That's going to make us want to spend our money on. <laughs> and so, this desk <clears throat> is a 48 stereo channel digital mixer. 48 channels. And so, uh, so there's some questions out there. Like, is this... If it's 48 channel stereo, can you just run it as a 96 channel board? You know, things like that. Of course, it has the new one-to-one -one routing. And so we're just all curious to get our hands on this thing and see exactly what's under the hood and how flexible it is. And so, I would say... It's definitely a, it's an upgrade to the X32 platform in a term of technology, but in a term of local I.O., it's only eight. It's only eight um, ins and eight outs on it. So for those of us who run bigger productions, we definitely have to take advantage of the AES 50 ports, which it has three. So you can have three uh, of the DL32 or S32 snakes or a combination of um, <laughs> a lot of IO. <clears throat> and so Larry Alexander says he wish they made this board with more DCA outlets. Um, I'm not sure how many DCAs it has. I'm looking through my notes here. And and in the product description, right now I don't see a DCA count. I will add that to my list of research. Now, Mr. Florence says, his question is, do you know the length of the console? He can't seem to find the info anywhere. Uh, he's hoping that they keep it in under 36 inches. And it's funny that you say that. Um, I saw the length out there earlier today. And I want to say it was 32. Hold on. I might have it right here. No. course that's one of the things they don't have listed in the technical specs but I want to say it was 24 by 32 um, based on what I saw earlier today and actually I'm gonna take a second and see if I can find those specs I want to say it was 32. It was 32 by 24, if I'm not mistaken. And so, <clears throat> if you tuned in right now in the comments on Facebook or YouTube, 
uh, do me a favor. Let me know what your initial impression of this board is. And if you're planning to add this to your tool set, if you're going to replace your S32 or your X32 or M32, uh, me, myself, I have, the, I have this board right here. That's my board that I use for a lot of stuff. Right now, I'm using it for this live stream, and that's the M32 Live. And so, my concern with the physical size of it is bigger. <laughs> size do matter. <laughs> so, I'm concerned with the amount of space that it's going to take up on my desk. Because right now, on my table, I have a... Let me see if I can pan across... And show you all the table. We're gonna zoom out some. And so on my table is all of this stuff. And so I'm not sure if the S, if the um, the wing, how much table space is gonna take up. I, I know for sure I won't be able to have it in a case. On the same table because uh, when we set up and we do video production for events I try to limit everything to two six-foot tables the one table for the rig the second table is for my um, camera operators and director and so if I go with a bigger board that's gonna make me have to have three tables and so we'll see we'll see now, <clears throat> the screen on this thing is um, definitely an upgrade compared to the screen that's on the both the S32, the M32, and the X32. It's a 10-inch touchscreen. How long have we wanted? <laughs> how long have we all wished for the Behringer and the Midas to have a touchscreen? how improved our workflow would be just being able to touch, slide, without having to use the iPad. But this 10-inch touchscreen is the equivalent of having an iPad built in your desk. I think that part is awesome. Also, the fact that it's a capacitive touch screen. So that means it's not going to be flexing and moving um, when you're making your adjustments. The fact that it's a capacitive touchscreen is definitely a plus in my book. Now, the system also has a secondary touchscreen that's over on a channel strip. Now, if you take a closer look at the channel strip, if you look at these, the knobs, that first row of knobs and that second row of knob, knobs, those knobs are all touch sensitive. For my DJ folks on the Newmark NS7, 2, and 3, and on the Newmark NV, how you could touch the bass knob and it'll automatically kill. This mixer, if you touch one of these uh, rotary encoders, Whatever setting that's set to that knob automatically appears on that little screen. And so that little screen there in the middle is also touch sensitive. And so being able to maneuver and fly around the mixer to make adjustments, they give you a lot of options. One, you know, you got the touch screen, you got your sliders, you got the encoders, the channel strip. Uh, ha looks like it have more knobs than on the, uh, I'm looking at my Midas right now. My Midas got, let me see if I can um, show y'all the Midas. The knob is on the Midas. And so when I look at this thing, I'm comparing it to my S, to my X32, as well as my, um, burn uh, my, my Midas. And so, and just going between the two, 
I think that um, the control section is definitely going to take some getting used to coming from the Midas and going to this. Because I got to be honest and say I like how the Midas is laid out with their buttons. I just got in, got in used to it. But with this um, new Behringer wing, I'm pretty sure I get used to it. I'm pretty sure. I just think it's awesome <clears throat> just to have um, the touch screens and be able to not have to do so many mouse clicks or um, if you're using an iPad, go through so many different windows and be able to get to what you're trying to work on and make those adjustments on the fly. I definitely see in the um, the workflow once you get used to this board improving. <clears throat> the faders, this unit has 24 100 millimeter faders that's divided between three separate banks. <clears throat> so if you're familiar with the whole um, layer system that uh, Midas and Behringer have, it's the same thing. Um, like for example, the first section is um, 1 through 12, then it's 12 through 24, so on, uh, 13 through 24, so on and so forth. Each channel strip has a screen, and you can choose a custom graphic to go on that on those little screens. And instead of the screen having a color like it is on the Behringer and the Midas, it's just an LED strip that's at the top. And so, a closer look at that. That's going to take some getting used to as well. kind of wish they had a did like um, Allen and Heath did. I think it's Allen and Heath. Their whole fader slider lights up. And so <laughs> that would have been nice. But people would have complained about that too. Because there's so many people complaining about this board. They would have done it like this. or I think the biggest complaint is they don't like the light color. Everybody's wishing it was darker. That's why I need my homies at 12 inch, 12 inch scans to make a skin for it. So that way you can design your own custom skin and make this thing look any way you want. Now, the real panel I.O. On the back of this thing, you have your 8 oxen, 8 Ox ins and eight ox outs on quarter inch. You got uh, eight inputs with Midas Pro preamps and their combination quarter inch and XLR. And you got eight XLR outs. You have MIDI in and out. And you have two GPIO ports. <clears throat> Also on the back of this thing, you have two Ethernet ports that can be used for control, networking, and audio. So I'm not clear. I know this thing, they say it supports Dante, but it remains to seen if that Dante requires an additional card or will these Ethernet ports work. But more than likely, it's going to be an optional Dante card that'll go in the slot where the, um, the SD cards are. They got something new and exciting called Stage Connect on this thing where you could use a single XLR cable to connect to your stage and run your in-ear monitors and all that good stuff. So I'm anxious to see um, that technology in action and how much those stage connect um, breakout boxes are going to cost. Because <laughs> you know 
Um, it might not be too expensive, but it's definitely not going to be um, that cheap. <laughs> and last but not least, on the back of this thing, you have a EES port. And that's just a typical stereo out, it looks like, or stereo in, stereo out on AES. And that's used to connect like your drive racks and stuff like that. Now, the, um, the, U, the SD card, X-Wing Live um, interface card that's in this thing, <clears throat> they said this thing would capture 64 channels of 32-bit, 48 kilohertz audio to a pair of SD cards. So, imagine capturing 64 channels of audio to the SD cards. And the way, the way that they achieve this magic, they write 32 channels per SD card. So if you're doing a 64 channel show, both SD cards are recording at the same time. And it seems like this thing has modes where you can either do 30, up to 32 channels to one SD card, and then you could do a, a virtual mix and mix down to the second SD card. And so I know with the X Live card and the um, Midas Live, Midas 32R Live that I have, it's been a little tricky finding compatible SD cards. So hopefully um, they publish a list of compatible SD cards. Because that's a lot of data that's being written. Especially if you're doing a 32-bit, 48 kilohertz. That's going to be a lot. Real quick, in the YouTube comments, uh, Mr. Florence says, Speaking of Allen and Heath, how do you feel about that, ev that Avantis? Wow. <laughs> that Avantis board is nice. Um... <laughs> I think it might be um, at a price point where it might be uh, not so budget friendly. But let me um, look at the price real quick. Because I'm not sure the price of that thing. Whoa. Whoa. That's a totally different beast. The Allen & Heath Advantage Digital Mixer is $10,299. You could buy three and a half <laughs> of these Behringer wings for that price. Um, yeah. If I had the, the business justification to buy this Allen and & Heath and with the stage boxes and all that stuff <clears throat> you're probably looking at like a $14,000, $15,000 investment it will probably be worth it I like the fact that it has the two expansion slots yeah but uh, that's, a, that's a different ball game <clears throat> you got ten thousand dollars to spend. You might even be looking at something different. But for thirty five hundred dollars, I think this Behringer, um, <clears throat> it's a fair price, because everybody thought it was gonna be like six thousand dollars. So the fact that they launched launched it at um, three thousand four hundred and ninety nine dollars, I think is cool. But um, also, you got to remember that sometimes when Behringer <clears throat> launch a new product, the price drop within a couple of months. But well, right now, with the tariffs and everything, uh, prices might not be dropping until after the next election and all that good stuff. Then Beeman Boy 81 says, is the Persona Series 3 layout a bit easier to flow than this board. 
Now, let me pull up the presonus real quick on my screen. I don't remember how that thing looks. The Presonus, their S64, is about the same form factor and maybe have more faders, 33 moving faders. I'm not going to say that it's better. I'm going to say that they are similar. But I will have to spend some time on both boards to give you uh, a, an authentic answer to that question. Because right now, coming from the Midas platform, I would have to get used to either one of them. Because I'm just so used to the Midas. You know, because I started out with the X32 rack. No, I started out with an X Air, upgraded to the 32 rack. Then I got a 32 producer. Then I got the 32R. All that in the course of <laughs> about a year. <laughs> Maybe two years. <laughs> now, uh, as far as the I.O. and the expansion capabilities on this thing, with the 40 channels of, of stereo input processing, as well as the 8 oxes, you get output processing that includes 16 stereo buses. 16 stereo buses. Not 16 mono buses, but 16 stereo buses. You get 8 stereo matrices. That's an upgrade. You get 4 stereo mains. That's definitely an upgrade. You get the benefit of plug-and-play I.O. connectivity for up to 144 inputs across the AES 50 ports, which is three. Two headphone jacks. Of course, the MIDI. Um, yeah, here, here we go. The Dante sound grid and MADI support. Is going to be via an expansion port, expansion cards. Now, I like the fact that on this particular board, instead of having a USB interface on the expansion slot, it's just built into the, the main unit. A lot of people was complaining about the fact that they went with USB 2.0 opposed to USB 3.0 or 3.1 and the main reason I think they did that is because when you're launching a new product and you're reaching you're, you're hoping that your existing um, fan base or user base upgrade you don't want to force them to have to buy new computers so making it USB 2.0 enables it to be backwards compatible with some of the older um, laptops and desktop computers. So, that's, that's, that's what I think the justification is. But, even still, with that being said, they have managed to squeeze 48 inputs 48, a combination of 48 ins and outs over that USB 2.0. And so, it's a $3,500 board. Now, if it was 10000 like the Allen and Heath, then you might could gripe about only having the USB 2.0 and <clears throat> only having the um, eight ins and outs. Something that I thought was interesting was the fact that they incorporated the LED lighting 
into the mixer. How many times have you been trying to patch in cables? <laughs> How many times have you been trying to patch in cables and couldn't find a flashlight? Or had to reach for a flashlight? And I think it um, I think it's a good touch to have the lights, especially since you can adjust the brightness as well as turn them on and off. And there's um, under the middle section, there's like an orange LED lights that can be adjusted as well. I think I think it's a good look. Now the event stream team, this is how we use our system. You know, we set up at different venues. We bring out the cameras and trusting and video screens. And we shoot live video and do event lighting. And so, with that being said, I think that the, the Behringer Wing is a welcome addition to that Behringer family of tools. Now, one thing that I haven't heard discussed was if this unit is going to replace the um, X32 family. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the X32 is going to be discontinued. Another thing that I thought about was the fact that when they dropped the X32 platform, they did the X32, which was the full size board. They did the X32 compact, which was a little bit smaller, <clears throat> but had the stripper script screens. They did the producer, which was rack mount, and they did the rack unit, the X32 rack. And so, I want to know if there's going to be a wing compact or a wing producer in the format of the M32R because <clears throat> the wing itself I don't know how it will fit into my workflow as far as physical space you know I, I, I don't know but if you think about it, from the, from the form factor that is in, <clears throat> I'm not sure. Now, Mr. Florence says his only hope is that the drivers are rock solid. Whoo! <laughs> now, that right there is a whole different conversation. Hopefully. They will be USB class compliant so that no drivers will be will be required and that Mac OS and Windows 10 will just plug and play, load up your Pro Tools or your Cubase, whatever DAW you're gonna use to track in, and it just works. Now Another thing that wasn't mentioned in none of the announcements was if this unit is going to have the edit app. Like we got the M32 edit and the X32 edit. I'm hearing that it may not have the, the PC or Macintosh Apple um, application. You know, I, I've gotten spoiled to the having the, uh, the edit app. And for those of you tuned in that's never seen the edit app, I'm a, um, let me cue up mine. Let me zoom in some. <clears throat> and so, this is the edit app. Right here, let me move it up. And the edit app on the 32, 
I'm able to do some pretty good, you know, things like I got my meters here. You can show your mix buses, your oxes, all your ins and outs. And so I just tend to have this open on my secondary PC. I find it to be very useful, especially when you're doing um, mixing a big show. Just being able to glance over at this thing. And so hopefully they'll launch a companion Windows app. I know that they're going to do a, a tablet app. Like this is the um, app that I use on the tablet. This is the Mix Station app. And this app isn't developed by Behringer or that that um, whole in music group. This is done by a third party person who does it in his free time. I know they're releasing new apps for the platform for the tablet. I'm just not sure if it's um, going to be a PC application. So, I'm going to keep my eyes open. Now, the pre-order for this thing started today. Um, it's a couple of places that got it. Musicians, Friend, um, Sweetwater. Um, I'm on the fence. I'm tempted to pre-order, but on the other hand, I'm kind of waiting for version 2 of the firmware. <laughs> there was, uh, whenever they release hardware like this, you just got to be on the lookout. But I think um, Behringer has just gotten so good with the firmware on the X32 and the Midas side, the M32 firmware. I don't think the firmware itself is going to be an issue. I think it might initially be some minor issues that will be addressed pretty quickly. Because you know as soon as this platform starts shipping, they're going to have all the resources geared up for support. Because the X32 family of mixers sold over 700,000 units. So if they want to repeat that. They want to repeat that success with the wing product line. So we'll see. But comment in, uh, put it in the comments if you're planning to pre-order, if you're gonna buy this thing or not, if you're gonna wait. I'm gonna keep y'all posted as to what I'm gonna do. Right now I'm on the fence. Um, <laughs> the money been burning my pocket all day. I'm like, Ugh, it's $3,500. Do I need it? No. <laughs> Do I want it? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> we'll see. And so, thanks, Mr. Florence. He said that there will be an app for the tablets that's called Copilot. And yeah, I remember now that app will allow you to do the patching. It's geared towards the patching and the routing and all that good stuff. So I'm just really, really curious to see how this thing goes. And so, with that being said, I wanna thank y'all for tuning in. If you have not yet subscribed, to the YouTube channel, be sure to do that now. Uh, be sure to like this video and share it. Like I said, um, Shop Talk every week, I talk about different technology, software, hardware, anything that you want me to talk about on Shop Talk, be sure to hit me up, let me know. I'll do my best 
to get it in for you. So, with that being said, my name is Jay Rock. I represent Event Stream Team and the Good Power Jam DJs crew. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for your support. And be sure to become a Patreon member today. Alright? Appreciate y'all. I'm out. Event Stream Team. We can stream your event from any location with experienced technicians on site to produce the webcast. Multiple views can create more engaging presentations and increase your production value. Additional services such as sound systems, trussing, and lighting can be ideal for enhancing the environment at conferences, conventions, concerts, or sporting events. Your event can be recorded and streamed live to most popular video sites. We also offer fully produced corporate videos, television commercials, music videos, including lighting, audio, and editing at a high-end level. Consider the possibilities for your next event. Learn more at www.eventstreamteam.com. 